The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 30th October, 2020. Life and Death. I am. In addition to the clothes that cover your senses by repressing who you are, limiting your potential, there is another way to strip yourself that you must take into account. Me. Which one? I am. The garment of life. Your personality. Each life gives you a new outfit, a new armor, tool, with which you will face the most hostile and friendly environments. But when you have worn these clothes, you must leave them. You must free yourself from them. Death thus becomes the release of your personality rags to give you the opportunity to start a new path. Me. What is life and what is death? I am. Life arises from two Indo-European concepts adopted by Greek and modified by Latin. Goe and zoon, which give rise to bios and zoon, which mean alive and animal. To English, life, Indo-European gave a more coherent word, lape, which means perseverance, continue, remain. Thus, both concepts would refer to the perseverance capacity of what moves. Death, in a certain way, means to remain, to dwell in a concrete, stationary place, from the Latin mors, mori, something that no longer moves and therefore stays still. In English, death comes from the Indo-European deu, a concept of ending. From the universal point of view, life and death describe a pattern, a path, within the cosmic matrix. Me. What would that look like? I am. When the mental universe decided to express itself, it did so by expanding what was within itself, in the concept of interior, of nucleus, outward in the external, in the periphery, expanding. Inside and outside became two fundamental concepts for everything that would come later. Law of correspondence, vibration, rhythm, cause-effect, polarity, and generation, all would arise from the mental concept dream and dreamer. All this conceptual duality began to spread through pulse and impulse, action and reaction, generating synapses in the cosmic mind, creating ideas, thoughts that expanded like a network of consciousness about itself. But this network was only based on these two pulses, called the first point A and the second point B. Between one and the other, there is a journey. If A is the expression, and B is what he seeks to assimilate and understand of himself, then the line, the path that connects them, will be experience. Thus, by integrating in point B, it becomes the power for a new learning path, transcending the previous one by expressing itself. Each root between point A and point B is known as pattern, a word that comes from Latin and means protector, that is, that which limits and protects, delimits a space, time, or specific concept. The points corresponding to each other are called negative and positive, pulse and impulse, action and reaction, cause and effect, time and space, origin and end, birth and death. Therefore, a life is a pattern. A life is a limited concept of energy movement in which the universe experiences a new aspect of itself, Many patterns, together and successively, make up the womb. That is, a uterus of creation, from the Latin matrix, uterus, mother. Thus, each pattern is a life, and the matrix is the history of the soul, where hundreds of lives converge, and all together they make up the wisdom of being. Me. So life and death are a single vector between X and Y, but it's actually a continuum, as in its etymology, a constant permanence in motion. Death doesn't really exist then from the universal point of view. I am. Exactly. Each death is a new birth, and therefore there is no life, because if each beginning of life is a death, all vectors converge in the same idea, to be born, and being born gives rise to the word nothing. In the universe, there is only manifestation from constant birth and expression. Therefore, teachers from their wisdom remind you, are you ready to die? Me. 
Those were Merlin's words on the day I had to go through the most difficult part of the Kora, the road around the Kailash. When I set out to go to the mountain, I did so knowing that it would be a turning point in my life, because I had been told. That mountain for my life represents death, the site of transformation. My guides told me that I had to do it to start a new path in my life, and so I did. I would never have thought that there I would find the Druid, who accompanied me almost like a psychologist, asking me lapidary questions. I faced the death of all my loved ones and how I would react to them. I realized that in many cases we are more afraid of the loss of others than the end of our own life, because we are so linked to others that we have projected our own lives in the links with others. And if they die, it's like a part of me dies. My grandmother was going through a hard cancer process, and in the mountains I had to die in me for her, to help her transcend. Merlin made me write her a letter, telling her that I was freeing her, and that I was willing to die for her, so that in my actions she could feel free. The morning of the crossing of the Dolma La Pass, the highest and most difficult part of the road, when I woke up, I saw Merlin's face in front of me, saying with his old British acceptance, Are you ready to die? His question made me nervous, but I also remembered that he had already died many times, only that I felt that now I could control it, I could decide, and not an external agent. I got up and said yes, Arriving there, the lack of oxygen and the cold made me really feel that I was dying. But in my mind, I could see myself on the net. I could see all the masters, all the divinities, my ancestors, myself in every life, all as in a huge network of people sitting in the shape of a tetrahedron, practically expanded in all directions. I had never felt so fulfilled. His voice repeated, They are all you, and you are them. I am. They are the clothes that you wear in each dimension, in each world, which you will only inhabit when, by stripping yourself of all of them, you can become the whole from the void. From nothing be born. Me. Death is something that scares us all, by nature, and yet it is the most wonderful and orgasmic feeling one can feel. It is like fearing pleasure, fearing to be free. I am. The body was designed to experience and integrate, not to transcend. Transcendence is the task of the spirit and the soul, of letting go of the body, of freeing it from its experience, of making it expand all that it assimilated and accumulated for so long. To transcend is to educate the subject to do exactly the opposite of what it was designed to do, to let go. It is the body that fears death because it is the end of its purpose, although when the spirit becomes present it understands that it is in turn the beginning of a new one. Are you still afraid of death? Me. I no longer fear death, but it makes me uncomfortable to think about it happening to others around me, especially my mother. These days it has been complicated with health, and although I feel an enormous stability, when the teacher in the pyramid asked me, what are you willing to give if you are to experience death? And I answered, whatever is of me, but not my mother. I realized in that instant that although I am more than ever in my center, the idea of losing her continues to awaken my most human side. So you have to let go of the human you show, he told me. When I returned, my Instagram account had been hacked from Turkey, the head of the Kundalini snake of earth. Basically, my Instagram was my face to the world that I communicated to about 180,000 people every day, and that was lost. But you know, strangely, it didn't affect me. I understood what had happened. That morning in the pyramid, I had decided to die, to let myself die before everyone, to disappear, be born again, nothing, zero. I am. Death happens even when they are alive, because they are small, big transformations which, if you take responsibility for them, you understand their transcendence. There are many deaths, mental, conceptual, physical, biological, emotional, energetic, and they all confront us with discovering a new part in us. Dying is the gift of the universe to allow you to create a new reality. Life and death are not enemies of each other. They are a continuum. They are the experience and integration of every mental, emotional, and physical process, 
an eternal cycle of energy that gives meaning to each pattern throughout the entire matrix. Me, do not fear or deny destruction, for death and chaos are the opportunity for the universe to generate order and new life. They were the words of Shiva's spirit on the mountain. Death is the great transformation that we all hope for, but that for fear of living it in life, we relegate ourselves to experience it through our death. I am. Are you ready to die? Me. Yes, I am. For I am life and death in constant motion, always ready to be born again.